Hey everybody, thanks for checking out another video. So in this video, I want to demo some of the new features that I've been adding to my desktop environment in the browser, JavaScript OS, uh, Dataless OS as I call it. Uh, it goes by many names, I guess, by many aliases and descriptions. Uh, yeah, and let's just jump right into showing you it just to start things off here. Uh, my name is Dustin Brett, and this is my website, dustinbrett.com, which is running the Dataless desktop environment. Uh, it's been a few months since I did my last update, so there's been a few cool little changes and uh, yeah, I don't want to waste too much time uh, rolling up to it. Let's just dive right in, you know, and uh, check out the changes here. Um, so the first change that I added, like, I guess it was two months ago where I was still kind of big into this AI chat program that I built. I haven't done too much to it in a while, but I did do some stuff. And uh, as you can see here, I can say, hello, I'm an assistant. And one big thing I've added is, is like some more features to this gear thing. I might not, not have even had this gear thing before because these are the two new features I wanted to talk about. So uh, the first kind of cool one is the ability to change the engine basically before you had to go to an, into a config file uh and it was between just like this one this one uh, yeah hugging face open ai and the web llm now there's two web llm options either red pajama or vacuna which are i don't know like i say i'm kind of not into ai as much as i was a couple months ago so i, I don't even play with these too much but those are two of the models that exist uh, there's a lot more of them out there now but i, I haven't been you know i've kind of it's it's been winding down a little bit the ai news just for the last little bit you know maybe in a couple of months it'll be back sh shot up so these are just some features i've added so um but right now it's on the hugging face one uh and like we can demo here the the next feature which is basically the text to speech that i've added and the way that i've added text to speech let's demo it first and then i'll explain it so we'll we'll turn on text to speech basically by clicking the gear and then set text to speech and we'll pick a name here let's pick david's hello i'm an ai assistant how can I help you? How can I help you? There you go. So that's it basically can talk for you. So you can say, uh, hi, how are you? Question mark. And this one will talk to Hugging Face, so it'll be faster. I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. So that's kind of cool. How can I help you today? Right. So I've added a voice for it, basically. Uh, and it's pretty simple. Basically, just the web speech API. It's built into browsers, uh, most browsers. I think if you go to the bottom here, it might say which browsers. Yeah, like there's a lot of support. All these green ones, basically not Firefox, unfortunately. I mean, actually, no, Firefox can do some of it. I'm not sure which part this is, but I think it works in Firefox too. I could be wrong. If not, then I think I've already added some code to disable that. So hopefully that's the case. But yeah, basically it just lets you pick all the different languages, the text-to-speech that's already in your computer. So if you see here, if I click reset, I can go and see it again here. And there's quite a list here and it can even do different... Uh, languages but i think it basically still tries to speak english but just with like a different dialect i don't know let's try italiano here Hello, I'm an assistant. How can I help you? yeah basically it's just an italian person speaking english or something like that um but yeah so that's those those are the two features for the ai one that i've added uh another cool feature that i've added if you go over here to uh and yeah the web llm one just to finish off that ai part uh, this is WebLM, and like you see here now, they have the ability to pick between the engines here. Although it's not showing up in my screen here, but there's a drop down, and you can pick different, uh, like the Red Pajama, the Vacuna. That's basically it, really. Like they haven't mixed it up too much, and they haven't been updating too much. I've actually been contributing to their source code a little bit. Uh, you can see my picture here in the uh, here in the contributors. So I've added a few little things, but uh, I haven't been working with the AI too much stuff lately. Um, so yeah, this other feature, if you know about WAPM, like the WebAssembly, almost like NPM for WebAssembly, and it has just various things. I've done in the past a demo where like I've I've used it here. If you open up a terminal here, I can do WAPM, Kause, Kai, let me spell it right, assuming it works. Although Kause is actually not working right now. Yeah, that's a bad example, and I'll show you why actually. So this is using WAPM behind the scenes, and if you go to WAPM now, I notice that when you put Kause in, the first one that comes up is what you get when you type in the in the terminal. It just like picks the first one. And if you pick the first one here, and then you go down here to where you can download it and you click it, it actually doesn't exist anymore. So that's like the problem with package repositories is like it's busted right now. But one cool thing and relevant to the feature I've added, let's say if we go back to the main page here, there's actually another Kause in there. If you explore their packages, and there's this one here from Syra, some other person posted it and basically this one works so let's download this one and then my website has drag and drop features so from in chrome you can just drag it onto my website now you have it there and that basically is also a wa is just a dot wasm file and if you double click that there you go so now you got cowsay working again so you can see here and then so you can do wapm and then point to a wasm file now and say hi and there you go now cowsay works so that's doing like WebAssembly wasm executables in the terminal 
uh, and you could just pass these around as files. And you, if there were other demos we could do here, like put bytes into a file, some of these are, some of these don't work. Like I found a lot of these don't work, unfortunately. Like JQ, that probably doesn't work. We could demo it not working. So we download it here, drag it on here, and then double click it. Yeah, so it gives us some error. Like it's a legit error. Actually, no, maybe it did work there. Is that an error? Oh, maybe that's that's actually it working, I think. It exited because there was no input, but I wonder if how easy it is to put some input in there. Um, I mean, maybe. I think it doesn't perfectly work yet. I don't have it perfectly set up, but as you can see there, it's possible like this kind of web executable format of WASMs, and now I've kind of got that working in the terminal, which I thought was kind of cool. And there's some cool packages on here, but like I say, most of them don't work right now. Um, the next demo, so these are some cool demos. These are really where I've kind of stepped it up a notch is to add more authenticity. Let's reset it here and open it up. So the first thing I've added, if you right click here, you'll see two feet, two things I've added. So we right click a file and now we've already had the context menu before, but in open with now I've added a choose another app and you can actually pick it. And there you go. You get the open with dialogue that everybody recognizes and it works the same. If I click off of it, it disappears. So this is like one of my blog posts. Let's open the file location. So this is the folder, and these are these WHTML files. So let's pick uh, whichever one, that same one, interesting times. We right click it, so open with. So now we can say choose. So our two options you see here, before it would have been Monaco or Vim or the tiny MCE, like you have your options here, like of those three. But now I've added this dialog to let you pick, and you can pick from all sorts of ones. So you could try to open it in the Markdown Viewer, and it actually does work. Uh, it doesn't work quite the same way. But that's kind of cool because before that wasn't even an option. And you could try to open it in other things. You can actually open it in like JS DOS. So let's see, I open it in JS DOS. And now in my DOS emulator, uh, if we go directory, you can actually see it's in there. So I could say type. There we go. And that's actually the same file opened in like the DOS emulator. And it can I can even do that for the, the Windows emulator as well. So I can say open it in boxed wine. And it'll actually open in the Windows, like the wine emulator basically. And that's another one where you can kind of get to it. It's not particularly easy to find it just because of the, it's not really the way this thing works. But I think if you go to like mount drive D all files, there it is. And I can open that. Oh, maybe I can put like notepad. I think this has notepad. Mm, I think it has notepad, but yeah, I'm not sure where notepad is. Maybe you have to. First, I have to find like Notepad, or I have to find a file that can open in Notepad, and then from there maybe. It's tricky, anyways. Like unfortunately, but you can see the files in there. So that's another cool demo is the Open With dialog, and that works on all sorts of different things. Like let's say this. Uh, I mean, that actually it doesn't work on that one. It doesn't work on YouTube links basically, but if we open up like the just the main folders here, you can open like the PDF. Right now, it was just Monaco and Vim, but. Like, actually, that's another bad, it's a bad example because the PDF, uh, you can't really open it with anything else of relevance. But anyways, that's, that's the example. Basically, you can open them with different things. But at the same time, like, it, there's typically one app where it's like the perfect app, you know, just like in Windows. So in that way, the demo is a little limited. Uh, next one up is another cool one. Um, we can just demo it right here. So this file right here, let's say if we right click it, now I have properties dialog. And you can press properties and you can actually see, again, the the one we recognize, I've tried to copy it as close as possible. And this is actually showing the real properties. Like it'll show the size, it'll show the size in bytes, it'll show all the, the date information, uh, the app that it's supposed to be run in. Uh, and yeah, and you can even rename it from here. You can, let's say we name it 32, instead we'll call it 64. We say, okay, and there you go. Now it changes to 64. And you can do this on folders as well. So I could right click this folder and go properties. And you can see it calculates it there. It said found six files. It totaled five megabytes. And if you open it there, you see, yeah, there are indeed six files and it's the same, 5.68 megabytes. So yeah, properties dialog. That's another big one, I think. Uh, and it still has some work to do, but it works really good with single files. It works with folders. It doesn't work with like groups of files, but that's actually a problem I have in general with like trying to do groups of selecting of things and doing a single action with it. That's something I don't have completely uh, set up properly. Not 100%. Uh, but yeah, that's another cool demo. And then another cool one that I've recently done, if we look at the bottom right here, now when you click the clock, you actually get uh, the calendar, basically. And I've, again, tried to copy the calendar as similar as it is to the Windows 10 one. And you can go and look at the different months. And if you're on your today month, it'll show like the today box as well. 
Uh, so yeah, that's a cool little thing. And I might add some features to that. I was thinking maybe in the background, it could load a .ics file, which is like a calendar file. And maybe I'll put like my birthday in there or dates that I think are important. So that when you go to my website, it'll show that that calendar could actually show a real agenda or something like that. So I've got some ideas for it for the future. Uh, and then one other one here we'll demo. It might not work. I'm a little worried it might not work, but let's try to do it here. So in the backgrounds, I have this one called Stable Diffusion, which is like an image generator. And if you click it, uh, basically now there's this progress bar that we're seeing. That's the new thing I've added. Before that wasn't working. Uh, but unfortunately, I found like the hugging face place where it gets the model files seems to be like limiting me. So I'm not, it might have hit my quota again and crash. Yeah, it crashed again. So I'm not sure if that's working or if there's like a new bug there. Unfortunately, I can't demo it. But I mean, the status bar part was the demo. So before you would have just seen a black screen and then like in 30 seconds, it would have jumped back to this, which is, is what, what happens when it fails, basically. Um, so I've demoed the failure working properly and my fallback working at least. Um, so yeah, those are little parts of it. Those are the kind of like the big pieces I wanted to show. And then the next thing I wanted to show was like some subtle things that I've done. Um, so one of them here was basically large PDF files. I'll just drag one on here. So here's one here, the hero's journey book. If you open it here, you'll see right now, boom, it opens within like one second, you see a cover and you can see the pro the, um, scroll bar is getting bigger. It's actually loading the pages, pro uh, like progressively kind of now, one thing I haven't completely worked out is like the ability to just like shoot to the bottom and see page 300 right away. Uh, but at least this way, like before it would have been completely frozen until it loads all 300 pages. So now at least it's doing them one at a time and it puts them in the this container so you can start looking at them right away, uh, which I thought was at least that's a minor improvement, but there's still a lot of work to be done as far as ideal ways to load uh, this PDF thing fast. I have some pretty simple ways to, to do it, I think. I just haven't put the work into it. Uh, so that's one little thing. Another cool thing I've added, if you right click on the, the, the background here or whatever, the desktop, is now I've added a, beside, there used to be inspect before and inspect will open up the dev tools uh, app basically. But now what I've added to is a view page source, kind of similar to like how if you're on a normal website and you right click, uh, oh, it doesn't show on my, str my streaming video, but it's in Chrome. There's at the bottom, there's view, view page source and inspect. So I've recreated those here. And now when you click view page source, it actually, oh, it doesn't work. Interesting. Well, it was working before. Well, it's always fun when demos don't work. It's cool that I had the dev tools open so you could see the console error. That's something you wouldn't normally get from websites if you don't have your own dev tools open. Uh, but what has happened is it's complaining. I recently updated the file, so this might just be a caching issue. Uh, but it's unfortunate because basically what happens is you click view page source and it's supposed to download the index file and then open that in uh, the Monaco editor. Let's see if we go directly to that file. See, that works, oddly enough. Maybe now this will work. View page source. No, it still, still messes up on us. And if we have dev tools open, we can see the error here. That's cool that we can see the error. So um, conceptually, that will work. Next time you go to try it, by the time this video comes out, I'll fix it. But yeah, conceptually, you click it, and then it's supposed to download the index file and then open it in the editor. Kind of similarly to when you, if like let's say for this page here, if I click view page source, it opens up the, the index file in like a, a viewing thing. So I was going to do the same like version of that, but luckily I, I like the demos have bugs, at least like I prefer to be bug free, I guess, but I, I'm always like, oh, cool, a bug, another thing to fix, you know, because I've been working on this thing for almost three years now and I just kind of enjoy like fixing those little things and just like, to me at this point, it's like polishing the code kind of thing. Next little thing uh, I wanted to mention, I, I recently saw someone had demoed my website on their YouTube video uh, channel, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and I and what I wanted to do, or when I saw them demoing it, I saw one thing they had is they opened up the background, and when they went to go to a background, it kept closing on them. And basically, what it is is like if you go off of the menu, the the sub menu closes. But I hadn't added the little subtle detail that there's a bit of a delay in Windows where it gives you a chance to like go off a little bit and come back on still. So I've added that now. So now, like you see, if I go off, it disappears. But there's a momentary delay, so you can go off and you can come back on still without the submenu disappearing. So that little subtle thing I think was a, was a nice little addition just because I saw somebody using my website in a demo and I saw them struggling with that. And I thought, well, why did, why did that happen? You know, why did it take them several times to click it? And then I looked in windows and it's like, oh, you know, there is actually a little delay there that I didn't notice before. Uh, so that's one thing. Another little piece I added, if you go into pictures and you go to a folder, let's say my wedding folder. Now what I've added is when you open up the photos app, 
Uh, I haven't added like the little arrow icons, but what you can do is if you click left or right, it'll actually go through the fo the pictures that are in the folder that you're in. So you can kind of just look at all the wedding photos at once, which I thought was kind of cool. And about it, when it gets to the end, it stops. And this actually emulates how Windows Photos works. Uh, so it's something like I've come to expect anyways. And when it wasn't, sometimes I would open up the photo app and then I'd click the arrow and I'd be like, oh, right, this is my pretend app and that doesn't work. And I was like, oh, I got to add that. So I've added it now. Um, and then, yeah, as far as demos, that's about it, I think. Yeah, like I had a note here to mention just that I've been working on Firefox, Safari, mobile, all the different little bugs to try to make everything work as smooth as possible, no matter what your platform is. Um, and on that note, uh, it's all open source. This the web's uh, it's on GitHub. It's called Datal Datal OS. I've got over three thousand commits. Been working on it for over two and a half years now. And yeah, I'm always happy to have people have post discussion topics. There's lots of discussions always ongoing. Post issues if you run into issues. I've ha had people post all sorts of stuff. Um, and yeah, like, um, just keep, uh, keep supporting me is, is, and the code is fine. And, uh, it's, it's like, it really kind of keep, keeps me motivated is what I'm saying is when I see people posting even issues, discussions, just anything where they're like, they're using my, my app and they're just like, Oh, this is cool. I want to like continue with it, you know? Um, so yeah, that's about it. So thanks for checking out this demo. Thanks for checking out my video. If you like it, please throw me a like and, uh, if you want to motivate me and uh, give me the ability to keep doing this stuff, uh, please subscribe just so I can kind of see like, oh, yeah, people people are into this, you know. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. And till the next one. Bye.